This video will cover the Rydberg formula and a third example of when a quantization hypothesis solved a problem that classical physics couldn't seem to solve. So if we take a bunch of atoms, and specifically in this case we're going to be discussing hydrogen atoms. So we take a bunch of hydrogen atoms and then we heat them up or do something to get them to emit a bunch of radiation. So they're going to take all that heat and move it away as radiation. And then that radiation, those photons, go towards a detector. The detector records the frequency or wavelength of all of those photons that are hitting it. And this gives us a spectrum. So spectra, which is the root of spectroscopy, is going to be very important because spectra are often the experimental insight we have to see what the energy levels of various quantum systems look like. So this radiation occurs when we're transitioning from one energy level to another, but that's for later on. Right now we're just going to look at this particular spectrum of hydrogen. Okay, so in 1885 a scientist named Balmer discovered that these hydrogen atoms will emit visible light, but they won't emit any frequency of visible light, they emit specific quantized values. So in the visible range, which is about 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers, there are four distinct wavelengths of light which are visible. One of which is red, the highest wavelength, lowest frequency, lowest energy. Then there's a, one in the green, one that's blue, one that's purple, and then the rest are ultraviolet. But they get closer and closer together until they stack very closely on top of each other and cut off at a specific value. So then later on in 1906, Lyman discovered in the ultraviolet range another s set of these kind of quantized wavelengths on the spectrum. He discovered that the same thing as Balmer, but in the UV, that there was one peak and then another one, and then a third that got closer and then closer and then closer until they stopped at a specific value. And in 1908, uh, Paschen discovered the same thing in the infrared region, that there was a specific peak, then another one, then they got closer and closer and closer until a lot of them, and then they cut off at a specific value. So each of them thought, well, what can predict the location of these various lines here? So for Balmer, he found that if you do some constant times 1 over 4, or 1 over 2 squared, minus 1 over n squared, where n is some number which is an integer greater than 2, so n can be 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. He discovered that these predict the locations of the lines in his series. The lines in the Balmer series are predicted by a constant times 1 over 2 squared minus 1 over n squared for n greater than 2. And then Lyman discovered a similar thing in the UV. It was a constant times 1 over 1 squared minus 1 over n squared but his n was any n greater than 1, so 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. And similarly, for the Passion series, you can fit a similar kind of formula, constant times 1 over 3 squared minus 1 over n squared, where n is greater than 3, so this is n equals 4, 5, 6, 7, etc. And the interesting thing is that all three of these fit to the same constant. Now experimentally, this constant in wave numbers comes out to be 109,677.6 inverse centimeters. So wave numbers, or nu bar, is equal to the frequency of the light divided by the speed of light. So this is also equal to 1 over the wavelength of the light. So this number, <clears throat> 109,677.6, falls in the UV range. And this would be the number if you have if you have the constant times 1 over 1 squared minus 1 over infinity squared is this value. Okay, and this number is very, very close to a number which we know today as the Rydberg constant, named after Rydberg, who figured all this out. So the, the Rydberg constant, which you'll find, is 109,737.3 wave numbers, which is very close to this experimental number. We'll talk about in a few more videos about what the difference between these two numbers and why it exists is. Okay, so Rydberg discovered that not only is this true 
for these three series, but it's true in general of any series that follows the following formula, that the nu bar, the inverse wavelength of the specific peak is equal to this Rydberg constant times 1 over n squared minus 1 over n2 squared. So n2 has to be a number which is bigger than n1, which has to be a number which is bigger than 0, and they are both integers. So they can both have values of 1, 2, 3, etc., but n2 has to be bigger than n1. And this formula overall is called the Rydberg formula, and it predicts any possible peak on a spectrum of hydrogen atoms. So any wavelength of radiation that a hydrogen atom is going to emit is going to be predicted by this formula. So this is kind of interesting that there are two integers in there for what radiation um, a hydrogen atom can emit. A hydrogen atom is a very, very small, very light object. It obeys the laws of quantum mechanics. And here we're seeing quantized numbers show up in the formula for what wavelength or frequency its radiation has. So we're going to explain where this comes from uh, in later videos and explore that a little bit more, but it's becoming very, very apparent to scientists thus in the early 1900s that this quantum mechanics idea seems to be really important.